The first thing you need to do to use the Biotech Synergy Multimode Spectrophotometer is to actually turn it on. What you notice when you turn on the spectrophotometer is going to go through a self-test. That self-test is just making sure the light source is in alignment, making sure everything's working okay, and also it will kick out the plate reader just to make sure that works, or the plate platform. It'll pull it back in. When the instrument is done with this self-test, the plate holder will come out and stay out. Uh, what's important at this point is to realize, at least I've been told by the manufacturer, that fluorescent lights can saturate the detector. So when this is done, you'll want to make sure you close it so you don't throw off your results or make your detector less sensitive. Uh, the quick way to do that is with the open and close button, which is right here. And once again, this is the power button. So just to close it, push it, and it will pull the plate in. The correct way to load a plate is to push the button to open it. The plate platform comes out. What you'll notice here is the A1. So if you look at your 96 volt plate, hopefully you can see this, you'll see A1 is up here. So the appropriate way to put your 96 volt micro titer plate is in that form and then push the button to close it. A lot of times this will be run through the software and so once you start to tell the software to read a plate, the plate will, the plate platform will come out and then you just load your plate accordingly. What I'm going to do is show you how to use the spectrophotometer software. The software that came with the spectrophotometer is called Gen 5. So first of all, make sure you have the spectrophotometer in its on position. And if you have Gen 5 open before you turn on the spectrophotometer, it will not establish a communication link with it. So you will need to close down Gen 5 and then reopen it. When you open up Gen 5, you'll see an interface in this type of format. Basically, you can create a new experiment and protocol, and I'll talk about what those are in a second. And also, if you have recently performed experiments or protocols, those will show up in the right here. Okay. This is a fairly nice spectrophotometer. It's what we call a multi-mode spectrophotometer. It will actually do four different things. It will do absorbance in both the UV and the visible light uh, spectrum. It will do fluorescence readings, so uh, excitation and emission, and it will also do luminescence. A majority of the time we do absorbance readings in both UV when we want to quantitate DNA or nucleic acids and absorbance when we want to do Bradford assays for proteins. So the first thing you'll want to do is open a protocol. The protocol is the basic part of the software that is going to tell the basically what the spectrophotometer should do. First thing you do is set up a procedure so basically tell the spectrophotometer what you're going to do. You'll want to set up your plate type. The majority of the time you use a 96 well plate, but you can also go down to 24 wells, 6 wells, uh, 1 by 8 flat bottoms. There's a variety of different types of plates that this spectrophotometer can take. Uh, it'll need to know that so it knows how to take the readings. We'll use 96 well plate. Uh, you can do a variety of different types of readings here, uh, but what we're doing in this procedure menu is basically telling the steps that it needs to perform. You can tell it to take a reading, you can shake if you need to mix something. You can actually delay it if you have an incubation time. You may do time readings or kinetic readings. You can monitor a well. You can also adjust the temperature. So you can even grow bacteria in here and have it shaking. And you can monitor the growth phases. Uh, you can also add plate in and out steps and a stop and resume steps. For the majority of the time, we just do reading. And we do absorbance readings, but as you can see here, there's fluorescence and luminescence. We're going to do absorbance. We're going to do an endpoint reading, but you have the option of scanning a well and also doing a spectrum. And you get a set of uh, the different uh, differences in the wavelengths that you want. In some cases, you may do a path length correction. Uh, for example, if you want to quantitate DNA, uh, multiplication factors are done to a path length of one centimeter. This, however, does not have a one centimeter path length, so you'll need to path length correct it. For just demonstrations here, we won't do path length correction. And then read speed, normal, rapid, or sweep. Uh, down here, you can actually tell it to do up to six uh, readings or different wavelengths on a well at a time. And in this case, we're going to choose down some preset ones, and we're going to do 590 nanometers and push OK. But before that, 
what we can see up here in the upper right hand corner is what we call a full plate. There are times where you don't have a full plate, so you don't want to waste a light source. They say these light sources are only good for up to a million flashes. So if you don't want it to flash empty wells, it's probably a good idea to dictate what wells you want it to. So here I'm only going to have it read half the plate. This will not only speed up the process, but also extend the life of your light source. Once you're done, push OK. Uh, if you need to add any other steps, add them, and then you can also drag and drop them in the appropriate order. It's a good idea to validate this sequence of events if it's multiple. And you push the validate button. If the machine can do it, it says it's valid, and then you proceed. Or you push OK. Now what's important is to actually get a reading. You need to tell the instrument that there's actually something in the well. So this is what the plate layout functionality is for. And in this case, you can do samples, you can do empty, a blank. So we'll do a blank here, and we're going to do a blank and a replicate. So we just set this to three. You can do your replicates horizontally or vertically. A blank, an example of blank is if you have DNA and TE buffer, your blank would just be TE buffer. You're looking for background absorbance, essentially. So when I click an A1, we'll see that the first three are filled with blank. If you have unknown samples, you put those as samples. I'm going to maintain my uh, replicate number of three, and you can change the number, and sometimes you can change the ID, but it's not always user friendly. And as I click down, it'll just increase it incrementally. Here I have seven unknowns. Another important thing that we uh, use to really benefit us with the spectrophoton, especially a multi-plate, is the idea that we can uh, do standards, our standard curves on it. So down here we have a standard, and we just can put our concentration, so these are our known values. Just for the sake of demonstration, I'll put 10 as the first one. We have our replicate numbers 3, and now we have our first standard as 10. Now we can just change our concentration number and move down. And now what this will do is this is going to tell the instrument that that's a standard well. And then it can use this to graph the data and then eventually uh, kind of uh, figure out the concentration of your unknowns. Well, here's our plate layout. If these were empty or there was something that you didn't like, you can go back to empty here and click or highlight and it will erase it. And we'll go back and put that as a sample. Go up here and change it to 7, which is what it was and I replace that. Once you're done at this field, push OK. You can also do data reduction. So once it does have the readings, you can tell it to actually process it and do some calculations. So here I'll double click on this. Uh, since I have a set blank, it's automatically going to subtract the average of the blanks from all of the cells. So do that transformation. And since I have a standard and doing a standard curve, I can have it do a curve analysis. So in this particular case, the well ID is going to be the standards. So it's going to be looking for that ID to know that that's what our standards are. The x-axis is going to be the concentrations, and it's going to be the concentrations as I had laid out in my plate layout. And my x-axis is going to be blank 590. So this is the data set that was created after it subtracted the blank from all of this, uh, the wells. I can then pick the type of curve. In this case, I'm going to pick a linear regression curve, but you can also do nonlinear, polynomial, a wide variety of different types of curves. And then data out, you can tell it this in formulas. This data set is going to end up in a data set called concentration. If you have a dilution factor, you can uh, put that in there too. And here we got it, transformation first, and then our curve analysis. If we're happy, we just push OK. And now we're essentially ready to go in terms of using the instrument. The other menu items here are to export your data in a wide variety of ways and other options that I personally haven't messed around with. Right? The first thing you'll want to do is save this. So you can go under the icon Save or go under File and Save or Save As. I'm going to push Save. And I'm going to do this as Testing B protocol, or save, and now I want to run the experiment. So I'm actually going to want to put in a plate and gather some data, and to do that I have to do that within an experiment. 